Praise God. St. John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same Word was made flesh and dwell amongst us. And he said he came to his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, he has given them the power to be called the children of God. We are, no, we are more than conquerors when we are in God. For it is given unto us the keys to unlock the doors of the kingdom of heaven. Today seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. The hymn writer said, Thee we adore eternal name, and humbly own to thee. How feebly is a mortal frame, what dying worms are we. Today we are nothing but flesh and blood, and the righteousness of men is like filthy rags and dead man bones. And today we are here not for form or fashion, but we are here to praise God in spirit and in truth. And the topic for today is spiritual hunger. Right? Or spiritual food. Spiritual food, spiritual hunger. No, we are in some aspects physical beings. And uh, as, as physical beings, we need nutrients to nourish our bodies. <clears throat> Amen. We need nutrients to nourish our bodies. We need the carbohydrates to provide the glucose so that we can get energy. We need the fats to ensure that we can produce hormones in our bodies and maintain the membranes of our cells so that our, we can transport things to and from and around our bodies we need proteins in our bodies all these are part of our nutrients so that we can make muscles and we can make chemicals that are important for transmitting information across our brains and and our entire nervous system so we can digest our food properly we need protein for that and all these nutrients help us satisfy and fulfill and keep our physical bodies in check and we also need our vitamins and our minerals to keep us strong and strengthen our immune system so that when you no know, ailments and and diseases infectious diseases pass we can fight them our immune system would be strong so we need those physical requirements so that we can maintain a strong physical body but the, the, you know just as we have a physical body we also have a spiritual body and just how we need to feed our physical bodies we need to feed our spiritual bodies as well for as mother lisu always says life is spiritual and we are spiritual people with a carnal experience and just as we take the time to feed our physical bodies and decorate our physical bodies and take care of our physical bodies, it is not wrong. But we must always, we must also feed and take care of our, our spiritual bodies. For we cannot go to heaven with a carnal mind. We cannot inherit the kingdom of God with a materialistic way of thinking. We can only inherit the kingdom of God when we are spiritually minded. For to be carnally minded is enmity with God. The carnal mind and God are sworn enemies. You can only inherit the kingdom of God when you think spiritually. And you can think spiritually... When you feed on spiritual things. When you meditate on spiritual things. And when you do those things, you'd be able to walk spiritually. You'd be able to talk spiritually. When someone comes to you for counsel and advice or advice, you can give them the right words that they would be able to feed on. So that when a hungry soul passes by, 
they too can give them food to eat. We all have a message that we can teach. We all are teachers in our own rights. There is something that each and every one of us can teach. There is a message that God had placed in each and every one of us hearts. And we must honor that message. But to honor that message, church, we must be able to discover the message. We must be able to understand the full ramifications of the message. We must be able to decode the message ourselves. That's why we must study to show ourselves approved. We must study the word of God. The word which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So that we would be able to understand the wisdom behind the message that God had given to us. So that when we are delivering that message, we are delivering that message with a high level of understanding. We are delivering that message, understanding that message at its fullest potential. At its deepest depths and its highest heights. Today we are talking about spiritual food. And spiritual hunger. And Jesus is speaking to the children of Galilee. Earlier up in chapter 6, you know, St. John the Apostle tells us of a story church. Amen. A story where Jesus was ministering unto a great multitude. And after he had ministered to the great multitude and performed many signs and wonders and he healed them of their diseases, he would have taken care of their spiritual needs. The spiritual needs he has taken care of was him giving them the words that his father, Jehovah God, had placed upon his heart to minister unto them. That was the spiritual food that Jesus had ministered unto the multitude. He had also ministered unto them healing. But the Bible said healing is the bread of his children. So the healing was also part of the spiritual food. He healed them from their diseases and they were cleansed. For there was healing balm in Gilead to heal the wounded and make them whole. Those wounded in the flesh and in the spirit. That's part of the spiritual food. To heal people of those things. And today, the Passover, was, which was a feast that celebrated the save, salvation of the children of God from the, from the anger of God when they were in the land of Egypt. When God instructed Moses to paint a blood-stained banner on the doorposts of every house of the Israelites so that when the avenging spirit passed, it would pass over them. So the feast of Passover was celebrated. And it was around the time of the feast of Passover that this message in St. John chapter 6 was delivered. <clears throat> and after Jesus would have ministered unto the multitude spiritually church, he had to minister unto them physically because life is all about a balance, church. It is not only about the physical. It is not only about the spiritual, but it's about a balance. We must be able to balance between our spiritual life and our physical life. And today, church, as we continue to go on and on in St. John chapter 6, the Bible tells us that... The, when Jesus looked at the multitude and, he, and it came to the time when they were about to leave church and, and they, they were about to leave without food to eat. And Jesus was talking about physical food here. Jesus said it was not right to send the multitude away and not give them food to eat. So the disciples brought and uh, when they brought, you know, they had five loaves and three fishes. And when, when they brought the bread and, and the fishes, Jesus offered it up. 
he gave thanks and it was multiplied. That is wisdom, church. That is wisdom. We all have our loaves and our fishes. And today we are talking about spiritual food. And everything that I'm talking about here is spiritual food. It's words, food for thought. You know, and Jesus lifted up the loaves and the fishes and he gave thanks to the Father. And he blessed it. He yielded it unto God. And when he yielded it unto God, God blessed it and he multiplied. Why am I saying that? I am saying that to say that whatever we are engaged in, whatever we invest our time in, wherever we place our efforts, whatever we are working hard to build, Wherever we are laboring, whatever your work is, whatever your talent is, and your skills and your abilities, lift it unto God. And ask God to crown your efforts with his grace. And when God crown your efforts with his grace, you will be able to see the multiplication of your talent and your blessing. You would be able to see the multiplicative power of God. To multiply your blessing. So Jesus fed them. And they were filled. 5,000 men. Not counting women and children. And when they were fed. You know they, they decided they are going to run after the man Jesus Christ. To make him a king. And, and when. <coughs> and when they were running after him. Jesus had to run away from them. Because they were trying to make him a king. Without going through the cross and shame. But Jesus wanted to go through the cross and shame. For oh, wondrous love to bleed and die. To go through the cross and shame. That guilty sinners such as I can plead thy gracious name so when they were running after jesus they were not running because they wanted to to honor him for the signs and the miracles that he had performed in his ability to heal the sickness and cleanse them from all diseases and unrighteousness and so forth but they were running behind him because he was able to feed them and because he was able to feed them, they said, you know what, let's make that man our king so that, you know, we would never go hungry. And in our time, most politicians rely on this principle. Once you feed the people and you give them food to eat, they would give you whatever support you want. But Jesus did not want that type of support. Jesus wanted the support from the people that God allowed him to have. So when they came to Jesus in verse 26 said, you know, you know verse 24, let's go to 24 and, and get some background here. He said, when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him, verse 25, on the other side of the sea, that's the Sea of Galilee. They said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? They're wondering, when did he leave? Sometimes you have to separate yourself from the chaos around you. Sometimes they want to elevate you. But sometimes you have to have the wisdom to know when that elevation would require you to de defray or or. or uh, stray away from the plan of God. Not all elevation is ordained by God. So they wanted to elevate Christ. But Christ knew that that was not from God. Because why? Christ knew what his purpose was. He came to live, teach, and die on the cross. To save the world from shame and disgrace. And utter destruction. Eternal damnation. To prepare a way. So that we can be saved. To, you know, to embrace us as part of his heavenly father's kingdom. 
And Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, or verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. People would always follow people that give them things to eat. Once you can give someone food to eat, most people would elevate you as a king. But you see, church, even at that, we must not elevate ourselves as kings and, and, and rulers over God's people in, to the extent that we fail to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. So Jesus told them, that they did not seek him or they were not coming after him because they wanted spiritual attention. They were coming after him because they wanted material attention. And there is nothing wrong with material attention and material help. We all need physical help from time to time. But you see the people of Galilee were only coming after Christ for the physical food. They were coming for, you know, they were coming for the loaves and the fishes. They were not coming for the healing. They were not coming for the words of consolation. The words of wisdom, they were not interested in those things. They were not interested in the, in the word of God. But they wanted the food that the master had to provide. And not the, the spiritual food. They wanted the physical food. Which food are you interested in today? So Christ had a message for them. In verse 27. He said. Do not labor. For the food which perishes. But for the food which. Endures to everlasting life. Do not labor. For the food which perishes. But rather. Labor for the food which endures to eternal life. Which the Son of Man will give you. Because God the Father had set his seal on him. God had ordained Christ to give us that spiritual food. That's why he said I am the bread of life. And he who come to me shall not hunger. And he who believe in me shall never die. He tell the lady by the well, I am the living water. And any man that drink of that water shall never thirst again. Amen, church. Amen. And today, church, we all have to get of that living water. That spiritual water. And that spiritual food. But that is food for the, for the soul. And today, church, the, the, the multitude were... were were confused, they were confruffled, and they were wondering what this man is saying. Well, but I remember Isaiah said, You know, Isaiah said, Oh, everyone that thirsted, come to the waters, come buy milk and honey without money and without price. Without money and without price. So God is saying here that I am willing. To give you freely of the fountain of my provision. I am willing to give you freely of the stores of my blessings. It is given unto you to unlock the doors of the kingdom of heaven. But you have to want it. You have to be willing to accept it. Are you willing to accept that spiritual food without money? And without price. Are you willing church? He said you know. They, be, they began to question him. You know they said you know. What shall we do that we may walk the works of God? They wanted to know how can they please God? Sorry. Jesus answered and said to them. This is the work of God. That you believe in him who sent who he sent. Therefore. They said to him. What sign? They wanted a sign. They wanted a miracle. They wanted some form of assurance. 
They wanted some form of validation for the message that he was given. They were saying that the father, Moses, gave them a sign in the wilderness. And the sign that Moses gave them according to the multitude's report that Moses caused manna to flow from heaven so that they could eat in the desert or in the wilderness. But Jesus had an accurate response to that. So Jesus said, Most assuredly, or verily I say unto you, uh, most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. And I know that was not the argument that Jesus was making, but Moses did, did not indeed give them that bread because it is God that had caused manna to rain from heaven, not Moses. Moses was just a vessel. But the people said Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. And uh, Jesus said, Moses did not give you that bread to eat. And he said, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. So Jesus was saying, Moses did not give you the bread actually. You know. the, the, the manna that you eat did not come from Moses. You know, uh, the manna that you eat came from God. However, God is even giving you a better bread than the manna that you get in the wilderness through Moses. From God. Because the manna that they received in the wilderness, they did not have it at the present time. That St. John is speaking here in the gospel. That manna had perished. The manna had perished. But the bread that God had given them is the everlasting bread. The bread of God. Which is he who comes down from heaven and gives his life to the world. Not only as a sacrifice on the cross, but his life as a sacrifice in terms of ministry to, to the people. When you are walking in the precepts of Christ, when you are walking the walk that God wants to walk and ministering to people, and saving souls for the kingdom of God. And encouraging persons to live right among their brethren. And encouraging persons to, you know, to accomplish great things in this world through Christ. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. And when you are encouraging persons to be successful in business. And successful in their spiritual life. And have a well-rounded Development. When you are doing that, you, your life is like a sacrifice to humanity. You are living a life of service to humanity. You are giving back to your community. You are giving back to the community that built you, that supported you, that developed you into what you are today and ensure that you are protected from the harsh realities of life. You are giving back. And as much as you do it to the least of my brethren, you have done it unto God. So, the bread of God came down from heaven and gave his life, gave his life to the world. And notice the, the word here, gave his life to the world and not for the world. We all know that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, but he gave his life not only for our sins, but he gave his life to us. So that his life is an example to us. His life is a ministry unto us. We can learn from his teachings. We can learn from his, what he stood for. We can learn from the things that he advocated. We can use him as our role model. For a holistic development. And they said in verse 34. Then they said to him. Lord. Give us this bread always. They wanted the bread. It's just like the man that wants salvation. 
But are you willing to do what it takes to get salvation? They wanted the bread. Give us this bread. Like the lady by the well, the Samaritan woman, she said, Give me that water. So I wouldn't have to waste my time and come and draw water from that well again. As if she was mocking the man Christ Jesus. So Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You have different type of bread. You have whole wheat bread. You have plain bread. You have burger bread. Right? You have unleavened bread. You have leavened bread. You have different bread. But the bread here is not talking about the bread that you go and buy in the bakery. It's not talking about the bread that you go and buy in the supermarket. It's not talking about the bread that you would bake in your oven. But it is talking about the spiritual food. It is talking about the life of Christ. For the life of Christ is like the bread that provides us with spiritual provision. For he said he would feed us according to the integrity of his heart. And guide us according to the skillfulness of his hand. So when we are talking about the bread of life here. We are not talking about a physical bread. But we are talking about Christ who represents the himself as a sacrifice to our sins and a sacrifice and a service to us we are talking about that, about christ and the teachings of christ which represents christ so christ is not only the physical person christ is not only the man that was was given birth to by mary the virgin but Christ was the teachings that he uttered. Just as Alvin is not only the person you are seeing physically. But my very words represent who I am. What I stand for represent myself. And we all have to understand that. The words that we speak, even the very words that we speak is spiritual. And our words represent us. You may go to a place where you are not known. To a convention where you are not known and many do not know you there. And the only thing that can save you. The only thing that can deliver you. The only thing that can help you stand your authority apart from Christ is your word, church. When you open your mouth and you speak. And you, you proclaim your message that is on your heart. Then persons would know who you are. Because that word that you proclaim represents the person. And that's why, church, we have to be careful the things that we say. Many of us are talking a set of crap. And we are not talking about the right things and the things that matter. Because why we are too caught up in talking about other people's business. When you open your mouth, have a message that is able to deliver someone. A message that is so powerful, church. That it sounds as if God himself is speaking that message. And today church. Your word represents your power. Your word represents your power. The black man's word represents his power church. The African's man's word represents his authority that God had given unto him. Use your voice to proclaim the word of God. Use your voice to stand for what you believe. Christ used his word. To stand and state his stand for his belief and state his belief in Christ. Your word represents your power. So the bread of life is not only the physical Christ. It's not only the life that Christ lived. But it's the words that Christ spoke. The words in the gospel that is written in this book here 
represents the bread of life because it is food for thought. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. What did Jesus tell Satan? Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. For the words that proceed from the mouth of God is God himself. That's why he said in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. I'm wondering if you are hearing me. I wonder if you are hearing me. The word that God spoke is God himself. So it is not just the word of God but that is speaking, but it is God that is speaking. That's why the word of God is the spirit of God. The word of God represents the spiritual presence of God in letters of the alphabet that we can meditate therein day and night and we shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his seasons his leaves shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper the ungodly are not so but they are like the chaff which you enjoy it away therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment the sinners in the congregation of the righteous for the lord know the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish but there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Today, church, Christ said, I am the bread of life. And when he said, I am the bread of life, he's talking about himself physically, spiritually. He's talking about his thoughts. He's talking about his message, his word. He's talking about everything that he represents. He is the bread of life. <coughs> and he who comes to me and he who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall not thirst. David said it another way you know? <coughs> David said the Lord is my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Waters represent the people. When the Bible talks about waters, waters in prophecy represents the people. If it is, you know, tumultuous waters, it represents confusion. If it is still water, it represents, you know, an environment, you know. A human surrounding of peace. That's what waters mean. So when David said he leaded me beside the still waters. He mean he gives me peace. The people of around me. Are contributing to my, 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 my peace of mind. Because God had surrounded me, surrounded me with those people. Church. And today church. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, do I walk to the valley of sh the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Because why? The Lord is with me. His rod and his staff comfort me. Because I establish him in my life. That's spiritual food, the church. That is spiritual food. And it's profitable for counsel. It's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for correction. The word of God is like a two-edged sword. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of mind and spirit. So he said, he who comes to me shall not hunger. And he who believes in me shall not thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. 
crisis is addressing the lack of faith in him here Christ is saying that they have seen him they have seen him in action they have seen what he can do they have observed his administration and they can testify of his hand amidst the children of men but yet they do not believe in him that's why he said he said you have seen me and yet do not believe all that the father gives me would come to me all that the father gives me will come to me and he said also and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge there is no speech no language where the voice isn't heard there is no speech no language where the voice isn't heard when we call God will answer us when the prayer go up the blessing will come down the justice will come down the salvation will come down the deliverance will come down the healing will come down the satisfaction will come down the peace of mind the stability of relationship the provision for our daily needs according to his riches in glory for he will guide us by the skillfulness of his hand and he will provide us according to the integrity of his heart oh give thanks unto the lord for his good for his mercies endure it forever let the whole house of israel say that his mercies endure it forever he said, he who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. So what this is saying here, when we go to God, when we seek the Lord while he may be found, when we call the Lord while he is near, he will never reject us. He said, you know, you know he said, you know, the clean hands, the clean hands and the pure heart, those with purity of intention, the Lord will never despise. God will not despise you. God loves the repentant sinner. God loves the sinner that give up their sinful nature. That condemns the flesh so that they do not face condemnation in the kingdom of God. If you deny me among your friends, I will deny you when the time comes before the great white throne judgment. And he said... <laughs> Christ is telling them here, you know, what Christ is basically telling them is that you don't all have to believe in me. You know, after all, you know, God is able of these stones to raise up men in the house of Israel. You know, and you know, God is actually telling them here in other words, indirectly, that you don't all have to believe in me. But everyone that come to me, it is because God had sent them to me. And because God had sent them to me, I will not cast them out. That's why in St. John chapter 7, he said, Father, I give you thanks uh, for all you have given unto me, for they are thine, uh, and thine are mine. They are thine, and thine are mine, because everything, everything that God, everyone that God had put in my life, is for his glory, and for his purpose, and for his glorification, and his honor. I am just a servant of the living God. Hoping to inherit eternal life. Hoping to, to sway away my destiny from eternal da damnation and disgrace. And today church said, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And we all must take example from that. We are not here to do what we want. We are not here to live as we like. We are not here to, to live a life that pleases us alone. We are here to live a life that is pleasing in the sight of God. We are here to do the whole will of God. We are here to live according to the precepts of God. We are here to give to the, those that are in need. 
We are here to clothe the naked. We are here to feed the, home, the hungry. To provide shelter for the homeless. And, and give provisions to those who are in need. And he said here church. And this is the will of him who sent me. Verse 40. The last verse. He said this is the will of him who sent me. That everyone who sees the son of God. Everyone who sees the son. And believe in him. May have eternal life. Have you come into an encounter with Christ? Have you encountered Christ? Have you come to know who Jesus is? If you want to know who the Lord and Savior is, take up the cross and follow him. Come to an encounter with Christ. Believe in Christ. Get to know Christ. And when you get to know Christ, your life would be better than it was before. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But the word of God shall not pass till all be fulfilled. And he said his word would not return unto him void. But it would return with a blessing. It would return with, with the assurance uh, it would return you no know, being as it has accomplished what God had sent it forth to accomplish. So the word of God would not return void, but it would return with what God had, had sent it to accomplish. So those who come into an encounter with Christ. And does not do as the Gentiles who come into the encounter with Christ. But yet do not believe. <clears throat> yet do not have faith. Those who come into an encounter with Christ. And believe in him. And as you grow older. You get to know him. And get to have faith in him. Beyond the shadow of a doubt. You will have everlasting life. And he will raise you up on the last day. That bright and getting up morning. That bright and getting up morning when Christ shall put in his appearance. And he said, come, he blessed of my father. Inherit the place that I have gone to prepare for you from the foundation of this world. Today, church, may God bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And be gracious unto you always. Until we meet again next Sunday. Praise God. At this time, I would invite Reverend.